Hey guys, this is Chris Fate with Cheat the Game coming back at you. Today we're going to be taking a look at something that's been giving people some problems and that's in finding uh, different ways to compare out your hero versus your enemies when you're doing like an infinite health script. And we're going to focus today on finding commonalities. It's a new feature that Darkbite put in to Cheat Engine, I believe on the 6.8.1 and the newest 6.8.2 and uh, it is a lot better than just using dissect data and I'm going to show you that where you can look in all registries when uh, your health base address is currently being held in the registry that is storing your health so uh, you don't you're not just stuck dissect data will just leave you stuck with that one registry because that's the only base address you have unless you do breakpoints and go find other addresses as well that you can put in dissect data and uh, Dartbyte eliminated all that by putting in a co fine commonalities feature that, let's say your health is in RCX, or your base health is in RCX, and say your health is like in an offset of 10, so it's RCX plus 10. Well, whenever the base address of your hero is in RCX, commonalities will let you look in all the registries of what all those registries and all the values that regis those registries are pointing to when uh, your base address is in RCX per se. So you're not just stuck looking in dissect data in just RCX. So you, you have more opportunity to find better compares and everything. And that's what we're gonna look at today. And I'm gonna be using Titan Quest, the anniversary series. And if you are a beginner, I really do recommend purchasing this game or one of the Titan Quest games. It is very beginner friendly and uh, values are straightforward it's exactly what you see on the screen so there are no hidden values it's not encrypted there are no memory checks and um, and you, it will really help you practice uh, you know improving your skills in writing scripts searching values and it's got something for all levels all the way from beginner to advanced uh, you can find flags easier you can you can experiment around follow the code a lot easier and this is something I always recommend so let me go ahead and bring everything up and we'll go ahead and get started with infinite health for Titan Quest anniversary okay so now I've come to an area where I'm about to take on some enemies very first quest of the game and as you can see down here we have a value of 300 this is our health I believe this over here is something like our magic which I believe you can do thunderbolts and whatever but uh right now we're just gonna concentrate on health so let's go ahead and attach cheat engine to the game as normal and I'm going to go ahead and search on a float. Now, that's usually what I start off on every game searching for. Will you always find it on float? No, but you, you most of the time you probably will, especially on newer games. So, But I always start with float, and if not, then I'll go to four byte, then two byte. So those are my three go-tos. And I'm going to check on this box here, simple values only, and we're going to go ahead and search for 300. So only 997, so let's go ahead and see if we can take some damage and weed that down a little. Now remember, we're not playing the game, we're just ha we're hacking the game, so... And it don't look like anything's going to attack me because they're attacking that horse. Because you're supposed to save that horse. So maybe this ain't the best option. Alright, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find some more enemies. We're supposed to save the horse, so they weren't attacking me. So, we can still hit unchanged value because there wasn't that many. Now, if you got like a billion addresses, don't do that until you weed them down some or you'll be sitting here a while. We'll go down here and see if we can find more enemies. Here's some. And they're just attacking everybody else, so let me see if I can start something. Maybe if we can get to an area where we don't have companions. They only seem to go after the companions, they don't seem to come after me. Okay, there we go, we went down, see, 203. Alright, 203. Now normally what you'd want to do is uh, decrease value instead of doing exact. This game you can do exact. Most other games you want to go increase, decrease, things like that. Especially when you're dealing with float values. 
so we need to see which one it actually is so I'm gonna freeze one that just says 203 resume game and it's still going down so let's try the top one instead and it's holding steady so let's see if there is uh, like a health increase just to verify if that's it or not let me bring cheat engine back over a little bit so I have it off screen there we go so that's probably it right there I'm going to turn it off and we want to see if there's any way to heal you see we do have an auto regeneration so we just took some more damage so what I want to do now is I'm going to put it all the way back up to 300 and see if that affects our health and take a look so this is indeed our health value so we can go on to the next step and we want to put the debugger on it find what accesses by right clicking and then find what accesses this address also known as a break on access and I just brought two of them up and didn't mean to alright and this will be everything that's accessing the address and I want to stress this about when I tell people to put a debugger on it and everything like that and they say well how do you know which was run first and I say look at the debugger as a net okay as a big huge net and it's covering your health address so anything that's trying to get to your health address or that opcode that is your health address uh, the net captures it so the first thing that hits it will pop up first and so on and so on and so on so anything that flies by it the net's going to pick up in the order that it received it okay so that's how you know what what came first when you put the debugger on it anyway so let's go back to the game and see what we find we want to look at what's constantly accessing it versus what is only when we're taking damage. So you see this is constantly reading our health up here. Looks like this also is too. And this is only when we're taking damage. So that's how you distinguish between what is constantly accessing. Usually an auto regeneration will be constantly accessing and things that are just monitoring the value for a specific condition will be constantly reading however in most cases health will only decrease when it's you actually take a hit so that's what we want to kind of look at right here so right now we just want to take a look at when we took a hit versus when it's constantly reading so let's go to that in the disassembler and take a look at it and you see here right off the bat we see what's going on with it we see XMMO is sending the new value to our health address we can look and see what's being held in XMM0 that's, that's holding the whole health so it's doing its subtraction elsewhere <clears throat> so let's go up and see what is subtracting from health if you take a look here we see that whatever's in XMM1 is subtracting an amount from our health uh, what's holding our health and XMMO is bringing that to our health address so we can see our current health here 734 734 is being loaded into XMMO XMM1 is subtracting a certain amount from that health and XMMO is redistributing it back into our health so basically I mean straight up you can see what's going on with it straight up so the next thing you want to do make sure that you make sure that says close but leave this up because you may use it for other areas when I say look for other areas in memory where you know you maybe only you are going through it or fewer things are going through addresses this is what I'm talking about look for other places in memory not just one location so if you ever hear me say that to you when you ask a question that's what I'm talking about I'll say put the debugger on it see if you can find another place in memory this is what I'm talking about these other these are other places in memory you can try all right so let's go ahead and put the debugger on the opcode writing to our health we're going to find out what addresses this instruction accesses let's put it on float because our values are float and we want to get enemies as well as ourselves so we want to get several enemies as well as ourselves so there's us so let's attack and we need at least two to three of them because you need to get a good solid compare and you can see there now we got ourselves and we got three enemies okay now we're not going to normally what I suggest doing is just highlight all three of them and open and dissect data 
but we're not going to do that this time. We're going to use the new feature called Find Commonalities Between Addresses. And this is what we're going to do. You want to get your health address because we need to separate you out from all other addresses, whether it be enemies or just other random values. We want to separate you from all other addresses. So what we're going to do is right click on it, highlight find commonalities, and we're going to mark us as selection as group one. And you'll know that you succeeded when you click off of it, you'll change color. You see how that's changed to blue? And if you have like hundreds of other ad or just a lot of other addresses then you just want to pick random ones and right click on it and then mark as group selection too and that'll turn that red but if you don't mark anything which well I've already marked it now but I'm gonna go ahead and mark the others as group two as well oh no wait you can clear the selection I just happen to see that clear that selection now it puts it back to normal. If you don't mark anything else, it will use every single other address in here as group two. So that's why you want to be careful doing that because if there are hundreds of addresses here, that could really uh, wreak havoc on your system here. So, But here we only have three and the game is paused. So instead of marking each one as group two, we're just going to scan for commonalities. Now what it's going to do okay please designate a group to at least oh it took me off group one I'm sorry let's remark me it clears everybody I'm sorry so mark us back as group one it will automatically put everything else as group two so now let's scan for commonalities and what it will bring up it will bring up a registry sheet like this and once you take a look we show registers and basically it's just showing you what's in the base registers right now I can't seem to bring that over. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of Windows 10. I'm sorry. All right. So you see right now, it only brought up ones that are actually holding a, an address in it. Okay. So those are the ones you need. I do not recommend using EBP or ESP right now, but you can use it to see values that are on the stack, okay, to help you. But I also recommend using this feature also if you're going to use the stack. But we're not doing that right now. We're just using this. So right now it only shows what addresses are being held in the registries when the base address is being held in your health. If you see our base address is ESI. We see ESI right here. This is our health base address. And these addresses are being stored in these registers when our base address is in ESI. So instead of just looking in ESI like Dissect Data does, it takes our base address and shows you everything ESI is pointing to, all those offsets and values that are being held at those addresses. We can also look in these other registers right here so we're going to take a look in EBX first so what I do is you double click on it and it automatically it separates you per what you told it to here I am in group one here are the other enemies in group two now normally they tell you to go ahead and select only find matching groups but I recommend that you do not because you don't necessarily have to find a group difference to find a good compare. All you need to do is find either you or your enemies that may happen to be all one value that does not change and the other addresses never reach. Okay? Hope that made sense. But I'm just saying, you could be like zero. You're, you know, all these offset, or you could find an offset where you're zero and only enemies have changing values that are never actually zero and it never goes to zero well you can still use that as a compare you can use yourself as being zero so keep that in mind too when you're having trouble finding compares also right now it will only display it in four bytes but you can change it to display in whatever okay so let's scan now remember this is the EBX registry now we're looking at everything the EBX will be pointing to when our health base address is in ESI and I'm gonna put that as health one to let me know what that is and here's my Titan quest I'm gonna get rid of this one and I'm gonna put this up here and it says it already exists. Do you want to replace it yes okay
Now this is all the offsets, same as you would see in dissect data. And here's our enemies. The only difference is, is you don't have the color code dissect data gets you, but you can see what's going on a lot better. And you can see group differences just all over the place. All right, here uh, all the enemies are zero, and we're we're some float value. These are float values right here. These three right here are definitely float values. You can see if I leave it highlighted that that's a float value. And enemies are all zero. That's a possible good one. Nine C. Nine eight's a possible good one. And this is EBX, not ECX. I'm gonna put it back on four byte. And I'm gonna view it as hexadecimal. Sometimes I like using hexadecimal. So we're gonna try that. We're gonna try and you can also see here that uh, we're 408,000 and all the enemies are something different but they're not group different. This enemy here is not the same value as these two. So that's one you could possibly try but we recommend finding group differences first. Looks like 9, 8, 5, 0, 5, 4. You know, these look like fairly good ones. You can see the differences here. But we're going to go ahead and go to our group differences first which is 9, 8 which we are one value and the computer is zero or the enemies are zero and I'm going to use my value this four uh, zero 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 and that's four byte hex for the float value of two that's what two looks like in its float form and this is what it looks like in its decimal form hex value so that's what I'm going to use nine eight so let's go ahead and get started Sorry about that. My phone started ringing. I had to grab that right quick. So we're back. And uh, okay, let's go ahead and get started. So, and also remember, this is just EBX. We still have other registries we can look in. ESI being one, we can see here that what does this mean here? A group two has a common value of one. That means all those addresses of the enemies that are in group two. In the base registry of ECX right now, they're all holding one. That is also something we could use right now and experiment with on. If ECX is always holding a one for enemies, we can use that itself as a compare. So it really shows us. And I'm going to show you that too. So if I can find it, I hope I didn't already get rid of it. I obviously didn't because there's the... Here it is right here. And that's what we're going to take a look at right now is here's our enemies and you see here it told us that all the group twos ecx is holding a value of one and ebp the group two all has a common value of e65124 and in rsp which is you know both of these are dealing with the stack group two all has that same address so you can also and i i take a screen print of it and i just come over here bring up paint and I, I keep that and I bring the game back up again I see if they hold those same common values you can also use that as a as a source of compare but I'm going to show you that if I bring up their registry information you can see I'm just going to bring up just two of them but all three of them are this way that it showed us without having to bring this up that our enemies all have a one in ECX EBP has the EC5124, EC5124, EC5124. So it automatically tells you what they share in common just via the registers right here. So keep that in mind also. Alrighty. So let's get to it. And remember, we're going to use that 98 where all our enemies are zero and we are 4000000. zero which I believe was the hex or I'm sorry it was the two value float so that's what we're going to use you can use it you can do it any way you want to you can use its hex form you can use its float form it doesn't matter all right so let's go ahead and put actually let's go up one let's uh let's use where that subtraction is actually occurring that's that's a good idea let's go ahead and stop that take the debugger off of it let's use where it's subtracted we're going to manipulate that instead we can still use those registries the registries are still the same it's only one opcode up so nothing's changed from that opcode to the next so let's just go ahead and label that health one and it automatically finds a array of bytes for us you may have to work on that later 
and we're going to come down here to new mem and cmp which is compare remember it was ebx plus 98 okay and remember four zero 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 and this is us or we could just use zero for our enemies it doesn't matter you can do it either way so since we are two which that's the float value of two in decimal form since we are two let me put it back on its four bytes so I ain't confusing somebody put it in its hex form since we are this value and all our enemies are zero we need to tell it what to do so if if it is that value at that offset 98 in EBX I need you to jump if not equal to code so it will jump if not equal down to here and continue subtracting not normal if it is that value I'm taking out that subtraction I did not move that up here so my guy will never jump down here to code and mine will always stay the same or you can do it differently and always just have it move 300 in there or go find the cap which I did but I'm not gonna do in this video because it take too much time and I'll be happy to do it in another video if you like but you know you can do it any way you want to it will just keep it from subtracting from your current health and we know it has an auto regeneration so when it it'll just auto regenerate up to its max value and it'll always be that value so that's good so we're just using our regeneration to help us so let's assign that to the current sheet table and we have to test this compare if it's not working or we start losing health some then we know we do not have a good compare it means that value is changing somehow or if enemies aren't taking damage that means that their values are changing and not following our condition so uh, we need to keep be aware of that so what I want to do is go back to the game and we want to make sure that stays at 300 I'm gonna put it down to 250 and see if it auto generates while we taking damage so I'm just gonna leave it and I'm not doing anything I'm just gonna let them well on me you see I got all these enemies and look at my health it's regenerating so it looks like it's working via our compare, but the way we truly know it's working is if we can kill our enemies. And take a look. Boom. Dead. Everybody's done. Okay, and maybe it's taking a little too long to kill them. So we're going to do a little intermediate thing instead of subtracting XMM1 from XMMO. Remember, this section of memory is only triggered when, we act, when they actually take a hit. So it's not constantly being triggered. So we can actually do this. We're going to put XORPS, XORPS. The XMMO registry. This is XOR in the XMMO registry, and anytime you XOR anything with itself, it makes it a zero. So we're actually just zeroing out the register. So now we're going to have every time we swing at them, it just moves zero into their health address, which is in essence a one hit kill. So let's try that and see if we can kill them quicker. All right, so look, his, his health is regenerating. Let's just hit him one time. Boom. Boom. He's full health. Boom. Full health. Boom. So now we got a one hit kill. So it looks like our compare is working and that's, you know, a beginner's way of using commonalities. And it's a lot better than just using dissect data. Now Darkbot has provided us a better way of finding compares. Finding compares is very difficult in a lot of games. It's easy in this game and it's great for beginners as far as using that but I recommend everybody getting this because I've been hacking this game and I, it's got something for every level. Every single level. A beginner, advanced, intermediate, every level. So I do hope this helps you, okay? And we can continue on talking about commonalities in other games as well, and I want to bring that up. And I'm happy to answer any questions in regards to that on how to find the, uh, if you want to just write 
uh, your cap to your health I, I can teach you how to do that that's a more intermediate way because you have to actually go through the ASM coding in this game sometimes they're stacked with each other I don't remember if it is in this game or not but it doesn't matter uh, I just wanted to talk about commonalities right now It don't look like they are, so one of these could be it, but we will have to actually look in the assembly to figure out where our uh, cap is. But we can do that at another time. But right now, I hope this helped you. Uh, finding commonalities is a better way to compare than just using the dissect data. I want to thank you all so much for coming out and supporting Cheat the Game and to all my partners and donators that could you know, contribute to Cheat the Game to keep Cheat the Game running every month. I really do appreciate it. These guys keep Cheat the Game going. I could not do it without them. I would have, I've already stopped this a long time ago, so I, I really owe them uh, all my thanks as well. And to my admins and mods on the Discord, Facebook, the website, and all the other places, y'all do a great job. Thank you so much for all your help. Uh, they are selfless, and they donate their own time to help people, and they just do an outstanding job. And to you as well for coming here to watch the video. If this helped you, uh, please place a like on it. It really helps us out a lot. We do have enemies that like coming here just to place a dislike on it, but hey, that's the world we live in. What can you do? <laughs> but, you know, you guys are why I'm here. The ones that are actually learning and want to learn this stuff, you know, that's what I'm here for, is to help you. So, you know, we help each other out. That's what we do. We're family, all right? All right, guys. Well, I'm out of here, and I will see you in the next lesson. Hopefully, it'll, I'll be able to come out with one by the weekend or a little bit after the weekend, and uh, we can continue on. Uh, let me know in the comments if you desire to see something. Now, remember, keep it in an offline game and not an online game, because right now, YouTube is really cracking down on online game hackers and banning their channels, so we got to be careful. Okay, so please be aware of that, all right? All right, guys, I'm out of here. You all take care. Keep on hacking. Most importantly, please enjoy yourself. That's really what it's all about. You cheat the game, fellas, because believe me, doesn't mind cheating you. You all take care of it.